Okay. Okay, this is um this is a little I suppose they call them vlogs. I think they call them vlogs. These guys on uh, YouTube do fantastic accounts of their trips all over the globe. Um I don't know if I'm going the right way here. Yeah, all over the globe they do uh, these vlogs. I've never done one. Uh, I don't pronounce to uh, know what I'm doing. I don't know if it's pointing the right way. Well, it's, it's pointing the right way. don't know if it's working or not. Um, I don't know if you can even hear this because I don't know if the microphone's working. See, I haven't even, I haven't even set off, and I've done it wrong. Um, I'm about as prepared as Diane Abbott. I've got to go all the way around now, but nice view, nice view. Um, yeah, I better tell you where I am. I'm in Fréjus, in the south of France. And uh, I've been here a few times, actually, over the years. A very nice place. Beautiful port area if ever you get down this way. Uh, very nice. The weather helps, of course. So, um, that's where I've just started from. Just come out of there. That was my apartment there. With secure... Uh, on Airbnb. It's brilliant. Secure parking. Though they never locked it up at night. But it has got a gate. Um, yeah, so this vlog thing. So, I've been down here for a few days now. I got the ferry from Plymouth to Santander last Sunday got me here for Monday morning done that journey a couple of times now uh, it was just uneventful really in terms of the one I did last year in September um, about half past one in the morning I, I was pitched right out of my bunk because it was that rough um, but not this time it was like a mill pond, it was great the only little thing was, uh, I was one of the first bikes on, and that's a massive mistake, don't do that again. Pitch up as late as you can, because then you're first off. Um, and because I was meeting a bloke called Duncan, who we'll come back to in a minute, he was a nice fella that I met in the queue, we were one of the first ones on. So we got stuffed right in the corner of um, the ship's car deck. It was a nightmare. Because uh, what it meant was, uh, I was facing the wrong way for one. And also, it got narrow. So I know I have to keep, you have to keep your, um, see one, not me. You have to keep your um, side stand just inside the cable that they attach the uh, tie wraps to. Uh, and I did that. And as you know, um, most people have had pannier sets these days. I've got a GTR 1400, I'll come back to that in a bit. Um, and they've got hard luggage. So, my back end has to stick out a little bit, because I'm right against the wall. So I did that, uh, and then I glanced over my shoulder as I was walking away, and two deckhands were then shifting my ass and my bike, right against the wall obviously to create space and that meant when I come back the next day to unload I couldn't stand my bike up and then an heavy old beast the uh, GTR was a pain in the ass so I had to wait till everybody moved their bikes and it was just me and Duncan left and then the chap nice chap give me a hand to shift it back out a little bit and we were the last off um, when I left my bike on that first day and got back to my cabin. I, un I What I always do is unload all my pockets, make sure I've got everything that counts for. And sure enough, I hadn't. I, uh, I'd lost my pannier keys. So before they shut the hold up for the night, I legged it back down to the car deck. And, um, and there were my keys on the floor by my bike, so that was lucky. 
and Duncan, when I saw him later on, on deck for the pint, he was panic struck because he'd, he'd lost his actual ignition keys. Uh, and sure enough, you might guess, when we got down there, they were in the ignition. They were safe and sound, really. Um, anyway, that was, that was it, really, for events on board ship. Landed in Santander, docked in Santander. Uh, to lovely weather. And then my first stay was only about 160 miles away in a, in a town in France called Pau, P-A-U. Um, and so that was, I'd set me sat nav to do um, no tolls. Oh, I was going to do no tolls this time if I could help it. One, they're expensive, two, it's boring. Um, so I set it to no tolls, which is great, all the way through to Bilbao. It was perfect. Uh, quick road, no tolls. Then on to San Sebastian, where my love hate relationship with a sat nav. Oh, I, you know, I can't live without them, can't live with them. And it suddenly started sticking me on these roads, left, right, left, right, then turn round the, when you can, turn round when you can. Oh, it went, do you know me nuts? It went ballistic. So, and it was red hot weather. So, what I did was um, I took stock while my blood pressure was rocketing and I decided what I'd do is get off and do what IT consultants say you do, uh, only they charge 80 quid an hour to say this, turn it off and turn it back on again. So, that's what I did. And lo and behold, it sorted itself out and away we went. So, eventually, gets to Pau via a couple of beautiful uh, French villages along the way, stopped and had a little in the ground, had uh, the obligatory coffee and croissant, <laughs> I've had more croissants than soft meat while I've been here, like you do, uh, and I bet you if I've had ten, I've probably eaten the equivalent of one, because I can't see the point of croissants, they, you, you get one, it looks nice, looks like a, a massive cashew nut in shape, doesn't it? And then you bite it and it explodes. It goes everywhere and you're left with a little tiny bit between your finger and your forefinger and your thumb. And you pop that in your mouth, trying to look as cool as out and you're covered in flakes of pastry. I don't know. But it's obligatory, you've got to do it, you've got to do it. I didn't mind. I've Get it shelling out nearly 12 quid or whatever the French would be off for. Uh, um, just got to concentrate a little bit here. Uh, it's quite, it's, it's a town of roundabouts, this phrase use. A million and one of them. Um, but you can't go wrong, really. Oh, I was going to go that And they don't like indicating. Um, so yeah, so the old croissant thing, get ripped off, pay a load of money for it, coffee that's about the size of a thimble, but you do it, because that's what you do. So I've had loads of them, and power was lovely, it was uh, really nice, got a lot of history, uh, had a nice hotel with a nice family, uh, made me very welcome, had a little walk around, had a quick cheeky beer and a kebab like you do, uh, and that was it, good night's sleep next day about another 140 mile to a really nice place called Albi in France. Uh, quite a bit bigger this place, uh, another nice hotel and it genuinely did have a nice secure garage parking, indoor garage blocked by a big steel door. This then makes you wonder what sort of area it is but it was alright. Uh, massive cathedral, amazing structure with a beautiful old town square with lots of idle piggledy little avenues and streets with shops. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, another cheeky beer, another kebab. You can tell how I'm going with this guy. French cuisine. Um, and then another great stop. So, where's the film from all this? You're probably asking. And if you're a serious vlogger like some of these guys on YouTube, fantastic captain this and the Yorkshire lads that all seem to go all over the world, they do a fantastic job. Well, in truth, I 
brought me, I brought my GoPro, it was in a little handy case, I had it buried at the bottom of my panniers, I couldn't be arsed getting out. That's the truth of it, I couldn't be arsed, unlucky, unlucky, and getting all my kit out to get my, uh, to get my GoPro. So, this is the first little trip. Um, I went to Monaco and Monte Carlo yesterday. I didn't get the GoPro out for that neither, but it was, uh, although it's a stunning road from Frejus to Monte Carlo via Nice, it is, it was grey and dull yesterday. So, it just didn't look, look the same, so I didn't bother. But today, what we're doing, we're, we're just as an experiment with this, really, and my microphone and my filming, is we're going from Frejus to a place called Port Grimond, I think it's called, beautiful place I've been before, and Saint-Tropez. Uh, and it, yeah, I'm going to try and hug the coast as best I can um, and see what this film turns out like. So I'm going to do what other vloggers do. I'm going to talk a little bit about the bike I'm on. So um, it's hard, if, it's all so hard with doing this thing with uh, pronouncing your words properly. Keep biting me in the cheek because my helmet forces my cheeks together. And I'm trying to talk. Um, right. The French biker. Uh, generally, if you didn't do it, generally they stick a leg out to say hello. Uh, the first time I ever, ever saw that, a few years ago, well, it's a fair few years ago now, um, I thought, he, what's he doing? Try to kick me off. But he wasn't, he was just saying hello. Um, so that's what you do, and if they come the opposite way, they more than often do not give you a little wave. They don't do it in the UK much anymore, we've lost all that. Um, just generally because your hands are frozen to the bars and you're gripping for dear life. But over here they still do it. Nice view, can you see, I don't, I'm hoping you're getting all this. It's beautiful blue sky, uh, lots of palm trees, beautiful sea. Um, yeah, so my bike, so I've had... Oh God, I've had millions of bikes. It's an illness, it's a sickness, it cost me a fortune. Um, oh, I'm not even going to attempt to... I've probably had... I've probably had eight or nine bikes this year. Uh, I get a lot of them on... I sell a lot of them on eBay and I get a lot of them on eBay. And I, I, I touch wood, about one lemon in about 15 years, I've done all right. I generally go off uh, the conversation and the contact with the owner, you get a feel if it's a proper bike and they've looked after their machine. And at the end of the day, if I got there and it wasn't as described, I, I'd walk away, simple as. Uh, so I've had loads of different bikes, adventure bikes, sports bikes, tourers, all sorts. Street fighters, XJRs, I've had loads of XJR 1300s, love them. Anyway, last year I had the best bike in my life and I came to Spain on it. I, I had a ZZR 1400. What a machine that is. Fastest bike I've ever had in my life. Um, it was that fast and pointless to me because I don't ride like that. But it was that fast that what I did, I took it off to uh, a chap at Ducati Racing in Bristol and had it remapped to go even faster. What was all that about? Cost me a few quid. I've gone the wrong way again. I'm going to be turning back around in a minute. I'm trying to hug the coast for you. Well, I've gone wrong. Anyway, I'll turn around. Um, oh, how quick was that bike? What a machine. And after the guy had done his magic with the remapping, oh, oh, it's one way. I can't even go that way. Can't go back the way I came. Uh, see, see, I do all this. I'm 57. I'd like to think that I'm really experienced. I tell everybody I'm a seasoned trap. I'm c crap. <sighs> but I enjoy it. It's a challenge, you know. I'm going to go around the block here. You get to see lots of things. When you are as thick as I am, when you're doing this sort of thing, can another block entrance. Um, you get to see lots of little side streets and you get to see lots of nice places. Here we go. I'm not going to indicate. I'm in France, no before indicate. Um, get back on the Santa Pay road. Yeah, so this ZZR14, oh man. When I was in Spain um, and I went over the mountains, 
perfect tarmac, beautiful weather, no traffic. Honestly, I went, uh, I went legally quick. Uh, just make sure I say that properly. I went legally quick. But that machine was rapid. Uh, I, I, I just couldn't use all of it. So, when it, why I've not got it now, you ask? Well, the simple reason is, for about three months after getting back, having done two and a half thousand miles, um, I had, I snapped my elbow mountain biking at Canic Chase. Um, I like my mountain biking, I've done it for years and years, and I've done it to a fairly decent level. But I snapped my elbow. And when I got back off that trip to Spain on that ZZR, I couldn't move, I had tennis elbow for, or mountain bikers elbow for about three months. It was agony. And it was riding position, and I, you know, I had the um, bar risers on it. I had the bar risers, and it helped a bit, but ah, it murdered me. So it had to go. But I tell you what, I missed that bike. One of the only bikes I've ever sold, I missed. And I miss that engine and that torque and power. Uh, and it was dead easy to ride. Um, so I thought, oh, well, what? Um, in between that, I had a Kawasaki Versus, another, uh, an adventure bike, another great bike. It was lovely, but a bit wheezy, I thought. Um, I always wanted another gear. However, I bought a GTR 1400 because it's a detuned ZZR 1400, apparently looks similar I'll come back to that in a minute because it isn't um, but as, as far as a heavy touring bike goes it's fantastically comfortable it goes like stink on the motorway uh, it does everything it's shaft drive which is great just nip out the French do it um, Italians do it worse so quick but still nothing like a ZR 1400 it's just a very quick touring bike uh, you know I think the ZR 1400 uh, you're going to get sick of me banging on about it but you could shoot me at this point uh, it's just spoiled me for loads of different engines but anyway so but this is good sounds great it's got an uh, what's it on it the guy put who bought it off I bought it off he put a scorpion on sounds all right uh, and he puts lots of little trick stuff on it and it's a lovely bike and I really enjoyed it over here riding it whether I keep it when I get back don't know um, I like twins as well I, I've never had a twino a fancy a thumping noisy twino so when I get back if I decide that's it for going abroad on a bike and I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it I might get a twino anyway that's another story so the GTR, oh the Lux, the Lux, yeah. So, so the bike I had last year, the ZR 1400, when you looked at it from the front, oh man, it looked like a shark. It looked like a great white shark. Fantastic looking thing. My missus said it was oh, amazing looking. This doesn't look like that. From the front, it looks like one of them 650 or 750 scooters that you see abroad a lot. When you, from the front, it looks like a scooter. It's bulbous. It, it, where is the ZZR 1400 look like a tiger shark? This looks like a beluga whale and a massive forehead. Uh, so it's not the best looking bike from the front. The rest of it looks alright. From the back it looks alright. Um, but it does its job. That fairing does its job really effectively. So can't complain. Okay, so that's the 